Hi everybody, it's Amy, also known as Aussie Stitcher in Texas here on FlossTube and over on Instagram. Here with you today on this Easter Sunday filming my March update. So I want to say a great thank you and welcome to all of my returning subscribers. Thank you for continuing to watch. And for anybody who's new here, welcome. You know, this month I'm going through nine projects that I've worked on in the month of March. I have three finishes, two new starts. One of those new starts was a finish and just a lot of progress on some good pieces. So let's dive right in. First off, let's go with my finishes. So I had a little start and finish this month and it was the February Birthstone Gnome from Soda Stitch. I am stitching these for a bunch of my friends. They're just so cute and less, I think this was about 1800 stitches. So a nice little weekend project. I stitched this on just a 28 count Monaco that I picked up from Michaels using all the cord for DMC. And it's so cute, look how little it is. And some of those colors you think, like, well, at least I was thinking weren't gonna go well together, especially like the nose when you're stitching it, you know, it's close up to your face. Everything kind of looked just odd, the colors, but once you know, you step back, it really does all blend very well together. I love Soda Stitch. So that was finish number one for the month of March. Next up was actually one of my Whip Go calls for the month. It's Wicked Witchcraft by Autumn Lane Stitchery. I had to do a thousand stitches on this month for the Whip Go call. And because I could kind of see how close I was to a finish, I decided to finish it off. And it ended up only being another 206 stitches to get to the finish. So here's where it was the last time that you saw it. I stitched this on a 32 count Jobelin in the color Nyad by Under the Sea Fabrics. It is the called for. Oh, that's upside down. And then using all the called for DMC with the exception of the yellow, I switched out for a fancy floss that I had. Let me see. But this is all finished. So you can see some of the variegated in the flames. I just had one that I had got from a Black Needle Society box. I think it was called Frog's Legs from one of the Frog Wars box. And this is all finished. So I don't know how I'm gonna finish this off yet, but for the moment, it's just gonna hang um, in my closet on you know some like clothes hangers that I attach them to. If anybody does know who sells those project rolls, um, put, put in the comments below if you know someone because I'd love to get my hands on one of those rather than having them. I mean, I use like trouser clip things to hang them. So they're all hanging and they're flat, but it would be nice to kind of protect them a little bit more by rolling them up in something. But that was finish number two for the month of March. Next up was a, a finish I wasn't really planning on. I had it on my Whipgo, my Whipgo board to finish it when it got called. And I was at the point where I was of the month where I was like, what am I going to stitch on next? Nothing was really calling to me. And I was purposely ignoring this piece because I was like, well, it's on my Whipgo board and I'll just do it then. And then I was like, why wait for it to get called when it might not get called until December? And there was only just over a thousand stitches left to do on it. And that is my Hive Rules by Primrose Cottage Stitches. Here is where it was the last time that you saw it. I decided I'm not waiting for <laughs> Whipgo to call it. I'm just gonna bring it out and finish it off. So here is where it is. They're all finished. So I'll get in close for some of it. So this is stitched on a 32 count, um, I think it's a Lugana by Zweigart, I believe in the color white opal. So it's just a, um, a sparkly opalescent. And I did a great job of wasting a ton of fabric by doing this smack bang in the middle and kind of wasting all of this stuff on the side. But you know, it made it very easy to work on in the Q-snap. I wasn't having to worry about margins or anything like that. But I just don't like wasting fabric. I'm getting better at that as I, as I continue to stitch. So those are the three finishes that I had, one of which was a saff, so a start and a finish, being my little February gnome for March. That brought my whip count down to, I think about 10 or 11, um, which I know isn't a lot, but I kind of like that number. 
but I did decide on a new another new start. This was not a finish, but another soda stitch. I'm working on this right now. This is called Pop-Up Store Cafe. I have done the Pop-Up Store Bookstore. That's what it's look like when it's finished. And here is where I'm up to. Ooh, still got it in my nerd hoop because I've got it like perfect where I'll be able to work on everything. This is on 40 count for doll in the color um, Sand Dollar by Be Stitch Me. And I am trying to do some of the back stitch as I go as I finish the piece. Um, as I like get to points, sorry, where it would be easy to finish. That's where I'm at. I've done 2,800 stitches on this one. So one thing I'm excited to show for like the next time I bring this out, it will be the comparison between the girl with no back stitch. You can't really tell what this is right now. And once the back stitch will go in, it's amazing the detail that it all brings out. That great, love working on soda stitch projects. Okay, I'm trying to be a little bit more tidy, but it's failing. <laughs> Next up, we'll get into just my general whips. Um, first off, it was another whip go call. Yes. So this is my Heaven and Earth Designs artwork by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. The Faces of Fairy 193. I have completed the companion piece for this, uh, which is 203, I think. Um, but it's the, the black swan, essentially. So I needed to do a thousand stitches on this for Whip Go. I'm happy to say I completed um, 20, not 20, 12, about 1200. Sorry, let me look at my notes. Yes. 1,259 stitches. Here is where it was the last time that you saw it. I've still got it in the Q-snap because it's in a great spot for me to continue on. Here is where it is now. So I have her full, well, almost the full eye. Um, oh my God, how amazing does this look? So the 1,000 stitches kind of got me to, I'm doing this in the Royal Rose method for the most part, um, got me to like where just I would have one kind of set of two left. So I decided may as well just finish that out because I believe the next kind of set of Royal Rose that I'll do will finish this first page. And so I did the thousand and was like, I'll come back if time allows later in the month once I do all my other goals to finish this other two. So I had it just like propped up on my couch and every day this eye <laughs> just I was like, I don't think I should keep that up where I can see it every day. <laughs> but it's just so stunning. I mean, the confetti it takes to pull off some of this and like the eyebrow and the, the feathers is a pain in the rear, do not get me wrong, but it is so worth it at the end of the day. Now, do I ever see myself doing a max color chart? Absolutely not. You know, I can't, I, it, too much confetti just is not fun for me. I, I don't like not feeling like I'm getting progress because it's taken, you know, an hour has passed, I'll use my lunch break to do some stitching and I've done 30 stitches because it's just constant change, 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 one stitch, one stitch, two stitches. So while I like the effect, I'm never gonna do a max color, I don't think. So that's my face as a fairy. Ooh, love it. I'm doing that, sorry, on a 16 count um, Ada. The other one I did on a 32 count. I wanted to just do the Ada so I didn't have to count as much. Um, and so they'll be the same size at the end of the day. But I'm liking that. Don't like how stiff Ada is, but you know, Ada, Ada is Ada. If they could figure out a way to make it softer, that would be great. Uh, next up is one of my monthly goals, which is Halloween Quaker by Leela Studio. Here is what it looks like when it's, when it's finished. I am working on this each month to be able to see a finish by September so that I can have it all fully finished, hopefully, by Halloween of this year. Here is whatever it looked like the last time you saw it. I am happy to say I got, how many stitches? 1,293 stitches on this. I am doing this on a 40 count Tsunami by Be Stitch Me. Um, it's a Verdol. I do, I do not like linen. Um, so thank goodness for the Verdol, but here's where it's up to. So I'm working this about a thousand stitches a month or whatever will, if I'm like mid motif, I will finish out a motif. Um, so I worked kind of at the bottom below the ghost. So that heart, the shoes, the little pumpkin, I 
think that motif between the shoes and the cat I did as well. I am using all the cold fall as well. So happy with the progress on that one. I might pull this out today and get a head start on my monthly goal for that, but we will see. All right, next up is a piece I haven't worked on in a little while and I was just feeling a hankering because it's another one that's kind of close to a finish and that if I just put a little bit more attention to it and stop waiting for it to get called in whip go, uh, I can have this finished soonish. Um, and that is my Twisted Rainbow Sampler by Northern Expression Needlework. Here's what it will look like. Here's where it was the last time that you saw it. I am stitching this on a 28 count black, just Lugana, I think, um, or Drobalin, whatever one it may be, I can't tell the difference. And here's where we're up to. I'm gonna bring this one back. So I think I only have about four color, four or five colors left. Um, and this just looks, sorry, I didn't do a great job ironing. This looks so amazing. The way the colors blend from one to the next, I absolutely love it. And when I work on this, I'll work on one color at a time. So I'll finish um, the color as part of the call that I do. But let me get close. Just so pretty. Now I think I have another kind of purpley pink and then into just pinks before it ends. So that is my Twisted Rainbow Sampler, just the cross stitch version. I did attempt the, um, the specialty stitch version. No, my skill set just is not there yet to be doing specialty stitches, but um, it still looks phenomenal in normal cross stitch, which I am very happy with. Next up is my um, Madame Chantilly. I worked on a Christmas one. This is Celebrate Christmas. Here's what it will look like when it's finished. Just had a hankering to get some progress in this piece. Here's what it looked like the last time that you saw it. I am doing this on a 40 count for doll by Be Stitch Me in the color Boneyard. Uh, let me just try and wrangle this fabric a little bit. Using all the called for, I did sub out um, some of the white for some etoile. Not all of it, just some of it. So as here is where we're up to. So I have completed the top tray in entirety um, with the exception of the back stitch along the banner, just underneath that first tier. I'll do that at the end. The second tray is mostly done. I just have a little bit next to the um, the Christmas tree where the, so where like the leaves from below just come above that tray. Um, but this time I was working on this side. So I have, you can't really see unless I bring it in out of the shadow. So I have kind of stitched all around. So now I can just fill this in, um, which will be great for if I'm working on a piece with a ton of confetti and need a bit of a break, I could pull this out and just kind of fill that in for a little bit, um, which also break up the monotony of fill-in sometimes. You know, sometimes fill-in is great, um, especially if like I'm watching a show that I'm really into um, and I can just fill in and not really be counting and paying attention. Um, and then other times when you're like, just give me something different. <laughs> okay, and then the final piece that I worked on this month is my Alternative Reality by Josephine Wall. Um, I don't have the picture with me of what it looks like when it's finished, so I'll throw it up there. Uh, I am doing this on an 18 count Ada using all the called for. Here is where it looks like the last time that you saw it. This is another one of my monthly goals to finish this in five years. So I have to do 25, about 25,000 stitches a year, which means about 2,000 stitches a month, plus the little calls it gets on my WebGo board. I worked on this for a little over 3,000 stitches this month. Um, oh, I've got threads everywhere, people, everywhere. Because I did my 2,000 and then was just, I need to work on something again. And this was like, this is the one. So I have the beginning of the girl here. So that's the top of her head and her hair, ton of confetti in that face. Um, but look at it. Oh, it's something's actually starting to, that's the, you know, the downside about, 
um, full coverage is sometimes it can take a while to get to something which can be a little bit demotivating but then once you do get to something oh you just want to keep stitching on it so cool and not as not too this won't be too big so this is the full width of it um and it is wider than it is long so or wider than it is high whatever that terminology is but just look at all the colors those lights have so much confetti this is another one where like you think the color choice is wrong as it's like you're looking at it and it's you know right in front of your face and you're like this is too orange or this is too pink how is this going to look good as a face color and then you step away and you're like oh no it does look really good <laughs> so trust the process is the moral of that story so that is everything that i worked on for the month of march um with the exception of what I, what i may work on this afternoon <laughs> Um, but this was being a weekend. It was a good time for me to film. So I decided to do that today. But that is everything I've, I've stitched on. Like I said, if that's all you're into, um, thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. If you could give this video a thumbs up, that would be fantastic. For those of you who are interested in haul I, and plans, I just have a little bit of haul. Um, but let's do my plans first. So the Whip Go calls for April are 18 and 21. 21 for me is my alternative reality to do 600 stitches. So because my plan of that is to do 2000 stitches a month, I add that to the Whipco call. So I'll do 2600 stitches this month on alternative reality to see that um, complete, that goal complete. And then number 18 for me is it just frosted pumpkin to work on a frosted pumpkin piece. The only piece I have on the go at the moment from frosted pumpkin is Castle Homecoming. So I started that sale when it started, stayed with it until about part eight, and then just lost interest in it entirely. I did decide to put it on my Whipco board because I thought that could be what I need to push myself to finish it. There's nothing wrong. I haven't like gone wrong in the piece to make me not want to work on it. I just, I'm not, I'm not enjoying it anymore. It's on a linen. I do not like working on linen. Um, it's too, the weave is too loose and I feel like my stitches don't look good. Um, but I'm going to try <laughs> to do that. Um, it's only a thousand stitches. I'm in, I think, where the castle is at the moment. That's the part that I'm working on that's still got loaded into Pattern Keeper. So that's the section I'll keep working on. And maybe that this is the push I need to get back into it. And if I as I'm working on it, absolutely hate it, then I will I will decide to UFO it in its entirety um, and maybe give it away or something like that, just so it doesn't go to waste. Um, but we will see what happens with that. My other monthly goals are to work on my Halloween Quaker uh, for a thousand stitches. We'll see where that gets me in the, um, in the kind of what's left and just see if I push for the finish or not. And then for the rest of it, I just think I'm gonna stitch what I feel. Um, oh, I do want to start another one of the gnomes and finish one of the gnomes this month um, because I want to get all of those finished uh, in ready for my friends when I go. At some point we'll have a lake weekend and I'll, I'll give them F to everybody there, uh, which will be a nice little gift. Whether they like it or not, they don't know I'm stitching it, but I just like to stitch and guess what people? <laughs> This is what happens. This is the product of my madness is you have to receive these gifts. Um, but I know they'll like them. Everybody who doesn't like those little gnomes. I mean, they're adorable. And that is kind of, I'll just stitch what I want when I want. I do use tiny decisions sometimes if I am um, the decision wheel. If I'm struggling to pick a piece, I'll use that. Uh, I also am thinking of starting and I'll throw up a photo here of, um, it's called Autumn by Alexandra Bach. I think is how you pronounce it. Um, it's another full coverage. It will become my biggest full coverage um, if I do it. I do have all the floss and um, the 25 count gridded easy count fabric for it. So I can start that at any point and I've kind of been putting it off. I don't know why because I think because it's so large but then at the same time it's one of those things where it's like if you don't start it you'll never finish it. So, and looking at the way I'm stitching at the moment, my stitching is getting kind of, I'm getting faster. I'm working through those 
um, my goals confetti times aside I'm working through my goals faster so something like the the twisted rainbow sampler which granted is one color so I can thread up like three needles and then just boom 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 you know that was 1200 stitches Yes, 1,200 stitches to complete that color, 1,237. I did that in two days, you know, not even. You know, I got, I think, 900 or 1,000 stitches in one day on that. I'm, granted, it was a weekend, but, you know, that just, I'm, I'm getting faster with my stitching. So my rotations are not taking me as long, so which means I'm kind of churning through them faster and I can either stitch longer on the pieces and sometimes I do sometimes the desire is there to keep stitching but then when I want to switch um sometimes I'm just like well I don't want to work on that I just worked on that you know I mean I worked on nine projects this month and I only have I think 12 or 13 so I work on almost every one of my pieces every month um, which is great because that means I can see finishes but at the same time it, I feel like I'm lacking variety because it, it feels like the same thing even though I'm only putting two or three days into it uh, it just feels like the same thing sometimes. So the result of that is to look at bringing in more more whips and doing more things, which is fine. I like it. Uh, but those are my plans for April. Let's move into haul, which of course I didn't bring with me. It's on the other side of this, my giant island. So I will uh, be right back in one second. Okay, so I am back. That would have been no transition for you, but that was me running around my house looking for things. So I am part of Two Fabrics of the Month. That's my only haul for this month. I am part of the Be Stitch Me, as you can tell, because most of my 40 count, all of my 40 count is Be Stitch Me. And under the C Fabrics, I get a 32 count Lugana from them, unless I ask for something different. So first off, this arrived in the mail yesterday, is the Be Stitch Me. It is called Gold Rush. I'm not taking it out of the fabrics, out of the plastic, sorry. So you can see some nice modeling there. Verdol is a lot more subtle in its modeling and it takes color very differently than linen. I've noticed because of other floss tubers that I watch who get Be Stitch Me Fabric of the Month and we'll have the same color as such. You know, we'll both have Gold Rush as an example. I haven't seen anybody else's Gold Rush, but let's say we'll both have Gold Rush and theirs is night and day in comparison to what I have. So it's just interesting to see how linen take linen and the different fibers take the color. Um, don't know what I will do on this. Maybe Quaker Pumpkins from Hello from Liz Matthews. I'd have to do a floss toss to check, but that was um, the Be Stitch Me fabric of the month. And then the next up is my Under the Sea fabrics. This is, like I said, a 32 count Lugana in the color Rubios, I think is how you say it. If it's not, I'm sorry. But look at this. This is Halloween written all over it. And I think this. So all of that where you see the orange in the um, in this pattern, that's fabric. So it's not like it would blend in. That's fabric show through. And the call for on it is pumpkin patch by Be Stitch Me. But I think this would be a great, great one. And this is almost, almost full coverage. Because apart from that orange in the moon, everything is in the orange that you see. So the orange that you see here, I think that orange in the moon is stitched, but almost full coverage. 140 by 196. But I think that would be perfect. And this is all just DMC. Seven skeins of 310. <laughs> Seven skeins of 310. This might be one I try out CXC on. I might order some more CXC. I'm gonna use CXC for the other um, Heaven and Earth designs that I'm planning on doing, the autumn. I bought all CXC for that because I wanted to give it a try. And because this is such a big piece, to kit it up was gonna be very expensive. If I use, well, not, not very expensive, but just more expensive than CS, CXC. So DMC here in the US, very lucky. DMC normally is 50 to 60 cents. And then when it's on sale, it's even less than that. But 50 to 60 cents times 200 skeins still adds up. And CXC is, I think I paid like 18 cents a skein. 
So now, yes, it's coming from China. I can't have it right now the way I can with DMC. You know, I can go to a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby or a Joann's right now and buy everything I need if they have it in stock. With the CXC coming from China, you know, you're waiting. I think when I ordered, it was two weeks. So it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't, you know, 20, 20 times where things were taking months, two weeks. I can hold off my starditis for two weeks if need be. Um, so I may look at CXC again for that because um, seven skeins of 310 and 310 in um, DMC just sometimes doesn't give you the coverage that you want. I personally haven't had a big issue with it, especially when I'm using two strands. Um, single strand, that's where I can definitely see like, oh no, this is not, I need something a little bit more fluffier, which is why a lot of people will use Anchor Black. Um, who knows if that's going to change now that DMC bought Anchor, but so I might try use the CXC for this just because there's so much of it. So much of the black. But how cool is this piece by Autumn Lane Stitchery? I got this in the Halloween box and I absolutely love it. And I actually took the painstaking time to put it into some pattern software so that I could make it digital and pattern keeper compatible. Oh, love it. All right. Well, that is it for today, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around and watching with me. Happy Easter to all of you who celebrate it. I hope you have an amazing day. Um, if I was back in Australia, we would, we would be doing lunch at my dad's. He'd be making a leg of lamb. And I'm, I'm, I miss that. My dad is a phenomenal cook, especially when it comes to a leg of lamb. So I know they would have done that as well yesterday for them. Um, so I'm super jealous for that. But everybody enjoy your plans with family, with friends, Easter egg hunt, no Easter egg hunt. Have an amazing weekend and have a fantastic April ahead of you. Bye, everybody.